Okay, good morning, everybody. Okay, today we will look at the second segment of chapter one. Okay, chapter one will be measurement. The second segment here we look at will be on the tools that we use to measure certain uh, uh certain quantities. Okay, and here we talk about we talk about the instruments that we use to measure length and time specifically. Okay, so now we are delaying. Okay, we will go straight into that particular chapter. Now, so here we are. Okay, so for measurement of length and measurement of time. Okay, so in terms of measurement, the basic after we learn about prefixes, we will roughly have an idea of how big is big, how small is small. Okay, so if you talk about 10 to the power of minus 19, minus 18, or minus 8, minus 6, these are how small the thing it can be. Okay, as small as a hand, diameter of a hair. Okay, it can be as big as mega, giga, even more than giga. Okay, even 10, 10 to the power of 12, 10 to the power of 14, as big as well, as big as the galaxies, all these, this, this. Okay, so in terms of magnitudes, prefixes, it does has an easy way of like uh, replacing or representing the letters or the numbers. Okay, then if you look at instruments to be used to measure, so if you look at specifically for length, okay, in the labs, we, we have actually a lot of uh, equipment or instruments to, to measure length. But in secondary school context, the common one are these four. Okay, measuring tape, meter rule, vernier, and micrometer school gauge. Okay, they are used to measure length of different, I would say of, of different uh, with different accuracies and of different uh, specifications. For example, if I want to measure uh, different sizes, if I want to measure the, the width of a laptop, I usually prefer using a tape measure or a meter rule. So if I want something smaller or thinner, okay, let's say I want to find the thickness of a coin or maybe I want to find the thickness of a test tube. Okay, I may want to resort to micrometer school gauge or vernier caliper. Okay, how do we use them? Okay, this is where this topic is about. Okay, for this particular segment here, for before we start on instruments, okay, there are one thing that we need to take note is what we call the precision of the instruments. Okay, the precision of the instruments is what we call the accuracy of the instruments. For example, how detailed I can measure uh, the, the, the particular, particular length using a uh, certain equipment. Okay, so the precision of the, the, the instruments actually tell us how good your instrument is. For example, if I use a ruler, okay, ruler the precision or the smallest uh, accuracy, the smallest detail I can measure okay, is what we call in 0.1 cm, or what we commonly call 1 dp in cm. So 1 dp in cm is what is the smallest number I can measure using a meter rule. Okay. So for meter rule, okay, if I have if I use meter rule, I will actually have my measurements to be maybe 9.6 cm. So if I have one decimal place, I will know this is a measurements recorded by using ruler. And of course, I will as most of us will know, okay, if you use ruler or use any instruments, you need to use it correctly. So make sure that you avoid all the parallax error, you read the data, you read the instruments, you read the, the particular objects directly above, okay, directly above it, okay, get the correct readings, not slanted sideways or left or right of the instruments to read the data because you will actually incur parallax error, which means that if you use, if you have parallax error, the object that you measure, the measurements that you make uh, about the object will not be as, as accurate as you want. Okay, it could be an overestimate or underestimate. Okay, for example, uh, tape measure, we also have certain precision. It is also 1 dp in cm. Okay, the only difference I would say between a meter rule and a tape measure is that meter rule only, like what the name suggests, it can only measure 1 meter max. But tape measurement, it can go as high as 3 meter, 4 meter, or 5 meter. So if you talk about 5 meter, yeah, I will want to use a tape measure. If I want to use something less than 1 meter, uh, maybe I can use meter rule. Okay, because they actually offer the same context, uh, same accuracy. Okay, so depends on what you want. How about if I want something smaller? Okay, for something smaller, I have this thing called vernier caliper. Okay, vernier caliper, it has... Uh, something smaller, usually it's around 12 to 15 cm. Okay, so uh, this is what you see on the vernier caliper. For those who, who, who have not seen vernier caliper, you look at the screen on the slide, top right hand corner, you see my handsome face. Huh? Okay, you see this, this is what we call a vernier caliper. Okay, it looks something like this. You can get a sign feature to show you. Okay, this is a vernier caliper. As you push out, you'll find that there's this tail that is sticking out. Okay, this is what we call a tail. Okay, it has different, it, it, it's used differently. 
Okay, so if I want to measure suddenly, I'll just close it. Okay, I'll get the sudden measurements. Okay, exactly how you use it or you want to get a feel of how you how burning caliper is being used. Okay, you can approach your science teacher, your physics teacher. Okay, uh, then to see to, to look to take a look at the instruments. Okay, for starter, okay, at least burning caliper, if you have it, at least you know the purpose and the function of each of the individual components, like inside jaws to measure internal diameter. Outside jaws, what are used for? And there's this thing that we want to pay particular attention to is how to read it, how to use these instruments to read the measurements. And in this case, we need to take note of certain, I would say certain skill, what we call the main skill and the vernier skill. Okay, the next slide, we'll look at how we want to read it. Now, for vernier skill, okay, I will classify into like a simple four steps, I would say three step progress. We have three step process whereby we read we read the vernier caliper, okay, it's classified on the screen here. Okay, of course, you have to make the objects, you have to make the object in the right place. So after you clamp it, okay, the first thing you look at is you look at the main scale. Well, main scale is here. This is the main scale. Okay, this is the main scale. Okay, the main scale and the scale below here is what we call the vernier scale. It's something we call the smaller scale, which is called vernier scale. Okay, now, what we are looking at is I want to get the measurements of the baby, maybe the diameter of the metasphere, okay, of the ball. So what I do now is first thing I look at is I look at the zero marking on the main scale. The zero marking, okay. Oh, uh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, I will look at the zero marking okay, on the vernier scale, not main scale, my mistake. Uh, zero marking on the vernier scale. Okay, so the zero marking on the vernier scale is the first place I look at. Okay, so this is step two. Okay, step one is putting the ball at the right place, okay? So step two, I look at the zero marking. So at this position now, I want to look at the main scale reading. Okay, so I look for the zero marking here. It will tell me where to read. So I look at the main scale. Now, the main scale here, it reads 3.1-ish. Okay, the zero marking is, uh, af is already after 3.1. Okay, it's after 3.1 already. So that's why I call 3.1-ish. Okay, so which means the reading that you're looking at is confirmed more than 3.1. Okay, so this is the first set of reading that you see from the main scale. Okay, it's 3.1. So 3.1, how much? 3.0, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 19. What, are, what is the exact number? What is the second DP? Okay, now how do you read the second DP? Okay, is I will look at step three. I will look at the vernier scale now again. So now what I do is I look for a specific line. A line on the vernier scale that is such that the line on the vernier scale and the line on the main scale, they actually coincide. They become one straight line, a single straight line here. Okay. Then after that, what you do is you actually read. Now you read the vernier scale reading. Now I read the vernier scale. Huh? So pay attention to it. Huh? Just now, I use the zero marking on the vernier scale. I read the main scale. Okay, and this is the main scale. Huh? Now, I use the vernier scale again. I read the, ver the reading on the vernier scale. Okay, so the first reading comes from the main scale. The second reading comes from the vernier scale. Okay, so now in this case, this is the line that coincides. So if you look at the vernier scale, this is zero. So this is one, two, three, four. So this will be the fourth line. Okay, this will be a fourth line. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to divide by 100. Okay, so it will be 0 0.04. Or to be exact, I look at it as a fourth line. So what I do is I look at my number here. I look at my digit. The fourth line will be actually my second or my second DP. Okay, the number on the second DP, so it will be four. Okay, and same thing, vernier caliper is measured in CM. So the reading will be 3.14. Okay, so this is what I mean by how do you read the vernier caliper, okay? Vernier caliper, same thing. The first step you do, okay, always, always look at the zero marking, okay, on the vernier scale. Then after that, read the reading on the main scale. Main scale first, huh? After that, go to the vernier scale again, look for the line that coincide with the main scale. So they, have, they form a straight line. Then now in this case, you read the vernier scale okay you read the number then you get the answer 
Okay, so this is how we look at vernier caliper, how we use vernier caliper. For this process, if you're not so sure or you're not so uh, confident about reading it, my suggestion is you actually can pause this video and just maybe just rewind it a bit, like maybe uh, 10 seconds or 15 seconds again, then just re-look really at the video again. That's the beauty about like uh, offline learning or uh, using learning through the video. You can actually pause the video now, then rewind it for 10 seconds to look at how vernier caliper is being used. Okay, if it's okay, then we will move on to the next instrument, which is micrometer screw gauge, which looks something like this on the screen, okay, like a small guy here, okay. Now, same thing, micrometer screw gauge is used to measure stuff with different sizes. Now, this is the smallest thing, smallest instruments, okay. So, the precision of this is what we call 3DP in CM. It's more, much, much more accurate, or something I say 2DP in MM, okay. And same as Vernier scales, you need to actually know how to read it, how to look at the parts and how to read it, okay? Now, for micrometer screw gauge, okay, the parts that you are concerned with is actually the timber scale, okay, and the main scale. Same as Vernier caliper, there's a main and there's a Vernier scale. So now we have a main scale, we have a timber scale, okay? The exact mechanism of how to use the micrometer screw gauge, usually I will, adjust, I will suggest that you look for your, science, your physics teacher, then he or she will actually explain the using what to take note. Like example, you should turn the ratchet, but not the timber when you when you tighten the, the micrometer screw gauge. Okay, the exact procedure, the exact usage, you actually you might you may want to look for your teacher for a face-to-face -face explanation, which is easier, coupled with the real thing maybe in your hand so they can have a feel of how it's being used. As for use, as for looking for the measurements, as for, as for reading the recording, we can actually do it now. Okay, so if you look at the recording of the micrometer screw gauge, what we do is when you turn it, when you're done, you're ready to read, it should look something like this. Okay, remember, uh, you are doing it as 2DP. You can get the answer 2DP in MM. Okay, so how does the reading look like, looks like? For micrometer screw gauge, okay, remember, a uh, micrometer screw gauge on the main scale, the reading looks like this. Okay, you have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so on the main scale, the upper part of the scale is like a whole number. So the bottom side of the main scale is a 0.5. This is 0.5. Every line is a 0.5. So how you read the main scale will be something like this. Okay, in a minute. Oh. Okay, so how you read the main scale will be something like this. Zero, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 7, 8, and 8.5. So upon seeing this data, you'll know that the first two digit of the reading that you have is 8.5. Okay, so 8.5 is the first reading that you have. So then after that, what you do is you proceed on to find the second reading. Okay, so 8.5 is the first reading. We are on the main scale up. Then after that, what you do? Okay. Then after that, you look for the timber scale. Timber scale, which line we are interested in? The line that we are interested in is this line. The line whereby timber scale and the determine line here on the main scale, it coincides. It becomes a perfect straight line. So what you do now is, upon seeing this straight line, I will want this number. I will divide by 100 so that I get a reading of 0 0.40. Okay, then after, that, then after that, what I do is I will actually add the timber scale and the main scale reading together. So it, your final reading will look like 8.5. Add plus a 0 0.40. This is the timber scale. This, this is the timber scale. This is the main scale. So the final reading that you have will be 8.9. Okay, this is how you use the micrometer screw gauge. Okay, you look at the reading from the main scale. You take the reading from the timber scale. After that, you add them together. Okay, same thing as before. If you are not sure of how to use it, you can actually rewind the video like maybe for 15 or 17 seconds to look at how micrometer screw is, is being used. Okay, if you are okay with this then, and you want to practice some of the questions, some of the hypothetical questions with theory, okay, you can actually look for like your, your teachers. Okay, because we have this, we have a, we, there, there is a good resources like along the way. Okay. There are good resources along the way that, that you might want to take note, okay? And the resources that we have, okay, it is available on this uh, student learning, uh, the learning, so students learning space, okay, which is the SLS. 
Okay. So example for this case here. Okay. So let's say if you want, you want to take a look at this, you want some practice question that you want, uh, they want to try on micrometers, to gauge all these things. You can actually look for the SLS. Okay. So we there are actually simulations like like this, right? For on the SLS, like for Bernier caliper. So let's say I have an object of certain length, I actually tweet it. Okay, so you will have a micrometer screw gauge here. So now when I look at you can practice the reading. Okay, the zero marking here. After that, what I do is I have zero marking is after 0 0.8. So I will know that the first reading will be 0 0.8. After that, I look for the line on the Vernier scale, uh, Vernier scale such that it coincides with the main scale, which is this third line. So the second DP for this video will be 0 0.83. So if you confirm is 0 0.83, so what you do is just add answer. Okay, then you submit. Okay, so once you submit, okay, the answer will come out. And if it's okay, then after that, the answer, okay, the answer will, show, will be shown. Okay, so you just take note of the answer will be shown. Okay, and you can see, you can check whether your method of reading it, is it correct or wrong. Okay, so you can look for your teachers to, 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 to get access to these simulations. Then likewise, for micrometer screw gauge, there is also another, uh, there, there's also another, uh, there's, there's, there's also another uh, simulations on your SLS like this. Okay, so you can actually uh, take a fictitious uh, object, then after you can just move your uh, micrometer screw gauge and after you can read your measurements. So after reading, you are sure how this how you proceed, you key in your data. So after that, if it's right, the simulation will actually prompt you. If it's wrong, then it's time to check back to this video, rewind like maybe 20 seconds to look at the method again. Okay. So other than that, okay, if you look, the last thing that you need to take note for micrometer screw gauge and vernier caliper, okay, other than the, the way you read them, is actually how much you can reach. Okay, for just take note of the range. For meter rule, is like literally one meter. Vernier caliper is usually the maximum is actually 150 cm. For micrometer screw gauge, actually the maximum we have is like maybe 2 cm or slightly 2.5. So usually I encourage students like anything less than 2 cm, although you can use Vernier caliper, okay, based on the range, but it's actually a more advisable to reuse micrometer screw gauge because 2 cm if I can use vernier caliper and micrometer screw gauge, I will actually want to use micrometer screw gauge because it can be, it is more accurate. Okay, so just take note of the ranges, different ranges. Okay, this is what I mentioned. Okay, the SLS. Okay, so approach your teacher. And the last one where we time. Time, I think it's quite straightforward. Time is actually what we mean by using a stopwatch. Okay, but in the olden days, before we actually use a stopwatch, we had this instrument, uh, we have this thing, we have this setup called pendulum. Okay, the swinging of pendulum will actually allow us to tell time because each oscillation will actually has a, can be controlled. I can have a certain oscillation, certain length of pendulum that swings at a certain time. So it is more for us to know what do we, how do we use pendulum? And how do we record time using a uh, pendulum? Okay. So likewise, if you look at pendulum, okay, pendulum wise, okay, if you use pendulum, okay, if you use recording for pendulum, you can actually look at pendulum in this way. So I will use the pendulum, I will swing the pendulum. And what you do is you are going to use a stopwatch to measure the time. Take note, stopwatch is 2 dp in seconds. Okay, so this is the precision. So how do I measure time okay, for Pendulum, okay, first thing first, just in case you forgot your lower side. Pendulum, what is pendulum? Pendulum is just a ball with a string tied to it. Okay, so this is a ball. Okay, and so this is a string. So that tied together, the whole setup will be called a pendulum. And then it's attached to maybe some retort stem or some swinging, uh, some ceiling. So what we do is, we will actually count the time taken for one oscillation. So one oscillation, okay, we're using a stopwatch to measure. So how do I calculate one oscillation? It's what we call your to and fro motion. Okay, whenever you, you have, you will go and you will come back. Okay, so this is what we call RSR. Okay, based on the picture, okay, it will be from Okay, from one side to the other side. Remember, one oscillation is not one swing. Uh, one oscillation is from R 
swing to S. Then after that, back to S again. This is one oscillation. So students, you need to roughly know how to calculate timing for all one oscillation. Okay. And just to take note, the, there's a name, there's a specific name for finding time for one oscillation. That particular name, okay, if you have not forgotten, okay, it's taught in set two or set one, I think. It's called a period. So time taken for one oscillation is actually a period. So which means if I give you 20 oscillations, it's let's say two minutes or 20 minutes. So one oscillation will actually be one minute or so-called the period for the oscillation is one minute. Okay, so the last thing before we end, okay, the for period, okay, the period of the pendulum is actually broadly depends on the length of the pendulum. Okay, how does it affect? Okay, just take note, okay, this one would be what we call the period, okay, the time increases when the length increases, okay. So for this particular section here, okay, we are looking at timing, okay, we are looking at length. So we have different instruments, so you need to be aware of the instruments to see how they are affected, or what are the range or when to use the instruments, followed by how to read the instruments. So please take note, okay, okay of these few operators which are new to you, okay, if nothing else, okay, remember, look for your teachers to look for, to, to get a few of micrometers, screw gauge, vernier calipers, and even uh, your, to getting your access on the SLS to try out different, uh, to try out the simulations, okay? Uh, and also lastly, maybe look for teachers to, to try out the pendulum experiments or maybe how to use the pendulum. Okay, if other than that, if not, okay, remember, uh, any questions, you can just leave your comments on my channel below or the video below. If not, you can drop me an email or a message, okay? Other than that, the next video will be out, okay? So in case you are interested in the next video, remember to click the subscribe button and the bell buttons to get a reminder of the video. Okay, if not, thank you. Yeah, have a nice day, everybody. See you.